app. I even paid for it. Four ninety nine was all it was. And I was going to see if it would change the uh, zoom in on the picture, but it did not. And of course, I'm still having my last cup of coffee because I keep it in something that keeps it good and hot. Um, Chris decided he wasn't going to go fish until 10 o'clock. So I thought I better do Bible study around 1030 and that would give me time to get my head acclimated after he left. And I've already had time to get ready, take my shower. And so as soon as Bible study is over, I've got to do some uh, work in the kitchen. I hope you are having a blessed day. I am late this morning, so maybe more of y'all will tune in today for Real Southern Woman. Um, and I have something just simple for show and tell today. Um, I'm going to turn this light off right here and see if it helps. Just one second. Okay. Um, I decided that I would turn the light off in the room because I keep a light on overhead. Um, and that way... It it would be a little less distracting. I had more people tell me that the border was distracting that than the ones that liked it. So I will not put it on here. Um, and that's fine. I might do one every once in a while with a flower or something simple. And uh, we'll see. All right. Today, this is a very simple thing. I've got my sweatshirt on today because it's still cold outside. And um, Amy took my first one that I ordered and took it off to college with her. So I bought me another one and it was delivered a few days ago. Um, I got these little eggs a long time ago, actually. I don't even remember where I got them from. But I got them. I may have even gotten them. I don't think I got them at Dollar General because they're really nice as far as like the detail on them and stuff. But I got them a long time ago. Let me turn the light on and see if it's going to be able to, y'all are going to be able to see the eggs better with the light on. Not really. Not really. Okay. So each egg has a different bird on it. And they're in a little nest. And so today I actually give you a link to Amazon and just show you what they've got available in birds and with birds and nests. And so I didn't pick a certain one or anything because, of course, you can't get these. But this one is a little uh, orange looking little. Uh, he looks like a sparrow, I guess. And here's one that's light brown. And I've decorated for the with these for years uh, in the springtime. I just like to set them out around the house. And then we've got a little gray bird. And another little yellow one with an orange wing. And so I just really like these. And I thought, well, I'll show them these today. These are my show and tell. They're just something I picked up. You know, I didn't bring anything. I didn't bring everything I owned with us when we moved down here to St. Mary's. Because we did uh, move into a smaller house. And But there were certain things, even if I'm not that sentimental, that I wanted to keep, of course. And this is one of those things that I brought with me for decor. So anyway, I just thought I'd show you the, those. I think they're cute. Um, but they're really fun to decorate with around the holidays. And normally I put them on the table. I actually do. So I'm going to set them back over here. Hope you are having a good day. I wish the cookie jar with the butterfly on the top was available. I'm not sure which one you're talking about. I guess you mean the bunny rabbit. Is that what you mean, Barbara? Because I actually found that online, I'm pretty sure. Um, so you might could look it up and see on Amazon. If that's not what you're talking about, I don't really know for sure what you're talking about. Um... We might could do that fellowship after the Bible study, but I hate for everybody to get distracted before Bible study because then they wouldn't listen to Bible study. They'd just be watching the comments. Uh, but yeah, it would be fun to do something like that. Um, 
a lot of people, one of you saying that you don't decorate anymore, you should decorate even for yourself, even if it's just one or two little things. Put a little, something little in your in your bathroom because we spend a lot of time in the bathroom. Put something little in your kitchen and something little on the table where you sit. And just to, you know, give you something to look forward to. And um, even if it's something simple, it would help you some, you know, and keep you... Uh, Keep you uh, sharp on the seasons changing and just, you know, I just think it's good for you. Now, I don't decorate to the hilt or nothing like my mama did. Oh, my gosh. My mama decorated the porch. And she decorated the house and she decorated the yard. And I mean, she did that for most all holidays. And I'm not like that. I do good just to get a wreath on the door outside. Um, but I, de I do decorate the house. And of course, I'm decorating a little more now that I have a cooking show. Um, I like to do the kitchen for y'all. It's fun. Um, Melinda said, Ronald said to advertise for Chris's channel. If y'all don't know that Chris has a channel, he does. And it's called Nichols Retirement Empire. And so if you want to take a look at that on YouTube, you can. Um, it's a lot of fun to watch Chris as he's out on the boat catching his fish. He has a wonderful camera. He uses a GoPro and the, and the filming is just great with it now that he's got his new GoPros in uh, check. He's fighting the bugs right now outside when he's fishing. There are gnats down here like crazy. And in his last video, he had me take a look at it. And you could see them in front of the camera whip and zip around the front of the camera because there were so many. He said it was ridiculous. He wear, he stays completely covered up except for his eyes. And he's got glasses on. And he even wears gloves on his hands up to his knuckles. And mainly because of the gnats. He didn't have to do that until we moved here. And you have to do it for the gnats here. Because they'll eat you up. And it, it doesn't do that much good spraying. And he don't like to spray. He just thinks it stinks. So he covers up good. And, um, and that way he can enjoy his fishing. I had somebody ask me yesterday, he was a man, and he said, is this for men too? And I said, well, of course it is. So y'all make sure and make the men feel welcome when they come on and comment. All right, we have a few prayer requests. We're going to go through them. Um, Kayleen or Kelly Sign Shields um, has a friend, Mike, that's allerg had an allergic reaction to an and he's in intensive care, breathing through a trach. And you can give us an update on him because that was yesterday. Joy Griffin has a nerve ablation today. So we're praying she's doing well. And if she hasn't started her um, treatment, that everything will go great. Barbara Wilson, he she's wanting to pray for us to pray that her husband stays in remission for his cancer. Um, Diane Rice Camp has a friend that lost her husband. Her name is Jimmy Ann. And I believe she put another request up that said that she had another friend that just lost her husband as well. Um, so, and, and I know we've got people on here that just lost their husbands and then they may have lost them in December. They may have lost them last week. But either way, um, it is a huge uh, change in your life that we absolutely need to keep you in our prayers for. Patsy Tuell's friend Shirley lost her husband to pancreatic cancer. Um, Barbara Mead's brother has cancer that has spread. Barbara Bass, her daddy had the vaccine yesterday and she was hoping it was his second one that he would have do good with it. Mandy Moore um, is the lady that will be helping the needy homemaker. And we definitely want to keep her in our prayers as well because she's going to be one that is changing her life, dropping everything and going over there to help this family. And I know that she will be faced with many hard um, decisions and uh, obstacles and just a lot going on. So let's also keep Mandy in our prayers. Lisa Hall um, wants us to pray for God's guidance in her life. And Nancy Koppel um, has had a hard time with no income since her husband passed this past December. So let's keep her in our prayers. Um, I 
I've been having something that I'll talk to y'all about, but I'm not quite ready to yet. And that is how we might could help other people. Um, so be in prayer about that, that the Lord would lead and guide me in that situation. Um, with that, yesterday when my sister tried to call during the Bible study, my dad, she had found out that my dad had a, has a fever and he had been having diarrhea and uh, vomiting. And so we were hoping that he doesn't have COVID. But I called him yesterday and he sounds great. So I think he may have just gotten a stomach bug. So we're thankful for that this morning and late yesterday. Um, and I haven't checked on him today. He told me not to, that he would call me. But you know, I'm sure he's fine, or I've, I would have heard from one of my siblings by now. So let's keep all of these people in our prayers today as another encouraging prayer. Uh, I mean, not prayer, devotional that's going to help us in these times of trials and show us that it's normal for a Christian to go through things and not to feel like you're singled out or being punished, per se. Um, I remember when I got cancer, my mother bless her heart. I mean, she's gone and done went to heaven. But in 2010, mama was still in good sound mind when I got my cancer. And she just could not get past the fact that God was punishing me for something I had done. And she kept uh, telling me that, you know, when she would call and um, it really was not a very encouraging thing for me to to hear or try to listen to. Actually, it was one of the closest times to God I had ever been. And I was trying to tell her that. But sometimes people have these mindsets that they've been taught throughout the years from others around them that when Christians go through hardship, it is punishment. And can I say that it's not always punishment. Sure, he can chastise you if you knowingly and willingly are sinning and doing stuff on purpose. But many of the things that we go through are not for chastisement. They are to mold us and to shape us and refine us as Christians. So um, I think that those of us who are faced with some of these trials are actually handpicked by God, special, and I think you should feel special, um, even if it is a horrible thing you're going through, because he is refining you and teaching you and molding you so that you can share and use it as a blessing later on with someone else. So don't always be in the mindset that when we go through these terrible things that we're just automatically being punished by God. That's up to the individual and they their self know how their relationship is with their Savior and um, let them uh, have that closeness one-on-one -on -one with Christ and the Holy Spirit to to know whether or not that's the case and you try to be an encouragement to them during these tough times. Now, that was my mother, and of course, she's going to express herself to me like someone else may not. And I loved her anyway. Of course, I don't hold grudges. When I grew up, I was taught to love my family unconditionally. And I have always loved my family unconditionally. And we are a family that forgives and forgives fast. We don't hold grudges no matter what is said or done because that's how you're supposed to be. If you can't love your family unconditionally, then who can you love unconditionally? And Jesus Christ loves us unconditionally. So therefore, we need to learn how to do the same thing. So if you are one of those Christians who are holding grudges against people for things that happened years ago or even last week, I pray for you that you can let go of some of that stuff because it's not doing anything but pulling you down and um, crippling you as a Christian. Now we're going to go into our Bible study today. It's not about that. It was just something that came to mind today because some people do believe that way. And I wanted to go through over that with you guys. Okay. Um, I'm going to open up Bible study for the day, and today it's coming out of 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And this is actually a verse 
that the Apostle Paul um, wrote, and it was when he was talking about his thorn in the flesh. And many of y'all know that the Apostle Paul um, was a great man of God after he was converted for our Lord Jesus, and that he wrote many books of the Bible, and he had a hard time, and he called it a thorn in the flesh, and he felt that God gave it to him to keep him in check. Um, I'm going to go there and read a little bit about this, just a couple of verses from where this is taken, so that you can know where it's coming from. And this is a thorn in the flesh, and it's coming for, from Second Corinthians chapter 12, and I'm going to start with verse 7. Um, I don't have my phone on ignore today because, I mean, something could happen with one of the kids and this it's late in the day, so I, ha I have it on. So I'm sorry about that call. Let me put it on uh, silent at least before we start reading the Word of God. Now, that's the way it always works, and it works like that in the church as well, that if we ever um, start to read the Word of the Lord, if there's ever a chance for the devil to get in the way, he does. I know I shouldn't say that, but it's true. The phone rings or a kid cries in the church or, you know, something always happens. But um, here we go. We're going to read it anyway and make that devil so mad, ain't we? All right, so this is Paul, um, and it says, A thorn in the flesh, and least I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me least I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. Um, I find it um, interesting here that he uses the word three, uh, because, you know, they say that any time something in the Bible is said three times that it's important. And it's the little things that we get so caught up in and the Word of God and want to argue about and try to make a point with. They're only mentioned once in the Bible, which is just crazy for us to even think it's so important that we need to make it a main part of our conversation. Um, when God plainly spells out in His Word everything that's very important, He, he says at least three times. So all these little things that you're trying to prove or make a point or use as a, I would say, um, way of life or um, what you would call a, a law for the Christian, um, unless it's spelled out and it's straightforward and um, talked about at least three times, try not to get caught up on it, okay? Especially... Um, when it's time to be an example for those around you, um, you don't want to argue and you want to make sure that the number one thing, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ, is what you, and the, and the lost, is what you're revolving in your mind around and not all these small things. Okay, so he says he sought the Lord three times that it would depart from him. And Lord knows I have migraines and I've had them since I was in my 20s. And I've often, many, 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 many times went to the Lord in prayer and said, please take this from me. I mean, I've had times when I would just say, oh gosh, I just hate my head and I wish I had a new one. Can I just please take this head off and you give me a new one? You know, just crazy stuff like that. You get so desperate. And so the Apostle Paul was here. I mean, he was desperate and he begged the Lord to take it from him. And then he said that the Lord said, Unto him, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So he says, therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, infirmity, infirmities. 
in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And who's strong? Not you, but Christ that's living through you makes you strong, right? So um, I thought I would read this part because it's really important for us to get um, where we are in the text before we start the Bible study. Okay, and of course I changed some of the words again to make it more uh, easy to read uh, because this is coming from Charles Spurgeon in the 1800s from England, which is quite a bit different the way they talked back then than the way we talk now. Um, so we're going to start now. It says, if none of God's saints were poor and tired, we should not know half so well the comfort of divine grace. When we find the wanderer who has nowhere to lay his head, who today can say, still, I trust in the Lord. When we see the poor starving on the br bread and water, who still glories in Jesus. When we see the grieving widow overwhelmed in affliction, and yet having faith in Christ, oh, what honor it reflects on the gospel. God's grace is illustrated and magnified in the poverty and trials of believers. Saints cope under every discouragement, believing that all things work together for their good. They believe that out of these obvious evils, a real blessing shall ultimately spring. And that their God would either work a rescue for them fast or that he will support them in the trouble for as long as he is pleased to keep them in it. This patience of the saints proves the power of divine grace. There is a lighthouse out at sea. It is a calm night. I cannot tell whether the lighthouse's structure is firm. The storm must rage about it, and then I will know whether it's going to stand. So it's the same with the Spirit's work. If we were not on many occasions surrounded with turbulent storms, we would not know that the Holy Spirit is true and strong. If the winds did not blow upon us, we would not know how firm and secure we, our structure, is due to his help. The master works of God are those men who stand in the midst of difficulties being loyal and unworried. He who would glorify his God must set his account upon meeting with many trials. So he's letting you know, get ready, you're going you're gonna to have some trials. No man can be noteworthy before the Lord unless his conflicts be many. If then yours be a much tried path, rejoice in it. Because you will be the better, show forth. Because you will the better show forth an all-sufficient grace of God. As for his failing you, never dream of it. Hate the thought. The God who has been sufficient until now should be trusted to the end. That is a wonderful Bible study that teaches us Christians that life has obstacles for a reason and that God is always with us there. And not only that, but if you're a Christian and you're ever going to have a story to share and a wonderful testimony to others, you're going to have to go through some trials. For who wants to hear the lives of somebody who never goes through anything, you know? Uh, for they know and they've not been tested and tried to see if they have a real faith and strength in the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope y'all have a wonderful day. Um, Evie, I've been wondering where you are. I'm glad you're here today. Um, 
I hope y'all have a wonderful day. And um, I'm going to sign off because I am going to work in the kitchen today. And maybe we could do something fun like, um, I forget, Super at 60 had mentioned earlier uh, on a Sunday. And that way it wouldn't be during Bible study. Y'all have a wonderful and blessed day in the Lord. And thanks for watching Real Southern Woman, where we love God and we're not ashamed to say it. Boy, I hear the birds singing today. I got to get out there and see what's going on. It's sunshine and finally. Bye, y'all. Love you.